Civil Industrial Engineering of the University of Pisa. And today uh, I'm here to present uh, a work made in collaboration with my colleague and friend Francesco Tamburino, that is not here today, so I'm presenting the work I love him. Uh, this is about the uh, effects of coating or the factory layers of lattice structures. So um, I would like to stress that this is a really a preliminary work. So we started everything less than a year ago. So I'm reporting some uh, uh, mostly experimental results and some numerical uh, preliminary numerical analysis. So okay, uh, a really um, brief background. I think most of you know uh, what is the lattice structures and why they are important. So um, regardless uh, uh, of the material, I mean metal or polymers, lattice structures are quite used for different reasons. I mean, starting from vibration isolation, heat dissipation, energy absorption, and let's say, generally speaking, also for lightweight design. Uh, in this case, uh, I will go immediately focusing on the topic. Uh, we are speaking about uh, FTM uh, printing, FTM manufacturing. And we are speaking about lattice structures, so specifically about the FCC lattice structures. So until now, FCC lattice structures. Uh, the main problem uh, we have doing printing with lattice structures is the different geometry we uh, get, especially for small components. So when we are speaking about strut, the strut is really small, so in this case we can speak about millimeters, and an FPDM printer can have problems printing the nominal geometry. So we can easily obtain geometries like staircase, geometries that can uh, get different problems from the lamination to, uh, say, adhesion problems. Um, a background on what we use. So we printed everything with PL on PLA. So as I told you, it's a preliminary work. So we just use PLA and FDM at the moment. And we just use an FCC structure. We use a Creality CR10 S5 for printing ultimate core as software and okay the one reported here is the set specimen for compression test the one that my colleague is using at the moment for other research the main problem is that if we want to uh, I mean load on fatigue cycles a specimen and we want to also look in tensile so with tensile load a specimen we need a clamping area okay so from this design uh, we they pass to the real specimen we use during the experiment. This is the, the design of the specimen. So we have two clamping areas that enable us to clamp the specimen of the machine. And we have the lattice stretcher part in the middle. Uh, as I told you before, the, I'm speaking about uh, an FCC lattice stretcher. As a material, we have PLA. These are the catalog values from Multimaker. Uh, unit cell this has these dimensions, and we have three per three per five um, unit cell on the, on the specimen. So, uh, also in this case, I mean, this is one kind of geometry. I can assure you that changing the geometry, also the result, fatty result, will change. So, I'm going to speak about specific case result for this kind of geometry, material, and at the manufacturing process. So, um, what is the aim? So, I spoke about coatings. So, what we did, or what uh, I mean, my colleague did, was uh, taking the specimens and uh, coating with a resin. So, the specimen was uh, immersed in a tank with some resin, then the resin was cured, UV cured. And here, I mean, it's probably difficult to see, but this is the specimen before curing and after curing. So, you can see a really Say light layer of coating. So this is a coating raising material properties after the curing process. So they are quite similar to the base material, in this case PLA. So let's start from some static tests. Uh, here I'm only reporting a tensile static test. Um, there is other research that uh, my um, colleague Stamborino is doing on compressive tests, and I'm not reporting this here today. So this is, uh, these are the results for the as printed specimens. So as printed means without coating, and the coated specimens. So as you can see, we have six tests in total. So three for the coated one, and three for the as printed. Uh, the main result you can see here is that the as printed specimens have a <coughs> slightly bigger elongation, while the coated specimens have a bigger resistance from a static point of view. So this was, uh, we did this test preliminary to the fatigue test only to understand how the coating can be on the, on the specimen. 
Let's go directly to the fatigue tests. So, fatigue tests are performed on the MTS uh, fatigue um, uh, hydraulic machine with a 25 kilonewton load cell, and at the moment, the results I'm going to present are only for a fully reversed fatigue test, so R equal to minus one. Uh, the behavior of the, oh sorry, I didn't tell you this, but the fatigue tests uh, at the moment are only displacement control fatigue tests. So mainly because of the machine we are using, so it's quite difficult to control the force while testing a structure like this because the machine, so the load cell, has a, I mean, a range too big to control such loads. So we are speaking about uh, like kilo newton. Uh, so it was, I mean, we tried, but it was quite difficult, so we went back to displacement control fatigue test. And this is the qualitative behavior of the force during the loading cycles, so the number of cycles we are setting the, the specimen. So we can identify three main phases. Uh, um, I wanted to stress also that the, say that the, the range, the number of cycles of each phase is not realistic, so the phase one it's quite short compared to the other phases, and then we will see in some, I mean, from some results uh, retrieved from the machine. So we have a first phase where the, the load uh, increases slightly, I would say, uh, while the time increases. Then we have a, almost a, like a plateau, and then this, the load starts decreasing until, let's say, an abruptly rupture of the specimen. So a lot of stress, uh, let's say, breakdown. And we have then a kind of staircase uh, behavior, so the specimen is going to break completely. And only spoke about the tensile force. So um, uh, testing the specimen to fully reverse load, we, we will have a tensile load and a compressive uh, load. So the compressive force didn't really show any uh, strange behavior, so I really didn't focus on that. So these are. Um, Real results from uh, retrieved from the machine. So here you are watching uh, force versus number of cycle for the coated in uh, blue and the as printed specimens. So here you can see the tensile, so the maximum force uh, over zero and the compressive force below zero. So what is the difference between the two graphs? Is the frequency of test. So we are testing here at three hertz and here at twenty hertz the specimen. The thing uh, is that the, uh, we still don't know really why, but the, all the specimens uh, increase the life while increasing the frequency, and, and, and I mean at least until 20 hertz. And the coded specimen always lasts a little bit longer. So what is the criterion we use for uh, deciding the number of cycles to failure? In this case is a 10% drop on the maximum force starting from the, the maximum value in, the, in this phase two, the beginning of the phase two, I showed before. So here are some um, five tests. I'm sorry for the colors. I'm not really like this in the presentation. But so uh, to give you a brief summary, we have here in blue the um, coated results for three hertz uh, test. Here in orange, we have the uh, S-printed result for the three hertz. Here we have the um, as printed result for 20 hertz, and here we have the coated result for 20 hertz. So um, as you can see, say the shifting in frequency <coughs> shifted the slope of the fat curve, and the, say using the coating of the specimen is increasing slightly for the 3 hertz and quite a little bit more for the 20 hertz. So it's shifting and increasing the fat endurance of the specimen from a fatigue point of view. And the, uh, say the, the color range is the so the scatter band, the 10, 90 percent of probability of failure, uh, and probably you don't really see it so well. So uh, numerical analysis, uh, as I told you before, these are really preliminary, and I mean I don't, I didn't really want to use some biological models here. Are easy linear elastic numerical analysis. <coughs> we only need them to highlight and spot the maximum stress point in the nominal geometry of the lattice structure and understand in, if the uh, cracks starts from there in the, in the specimen during the test. So here are the, the, um, the simulation. Here you see two models only to uh, simulate the outer part of the specimen and the inner part of the specimen. So we use some symmetries because 
there are some symmetries in the specimen. <coughs> and we tested, uh, so the simulation is totally really easy, uh, linear elastic uh, with a displacement of 0 0.3. That is the thick maximum displacement we tested on, the uh, displacement amplitude we tested on fatigue. And we did some simulation. So as you can see here, here we have uh, von Mises stress. We see some, uh, say, red dots of the maximum von Mises stress. And mainly in uh, all the specimens, we saw fractures starting from the maximum stress points, not always. But let's say it's also difficult in this case to understand where the crack starts and how the crack pro propagates. Okay, because we have a kind of quite big uh, thickness of the specimens, and so this, it's really difficult to, to analyze the crack while uh, the, the specimen is breaking down. What we are doing right now uh, are some analysis uh, with the thermal imaging camera to help us understand better. So we are using a dumb specimen and we have the test specimen. We are, say, designing some path where averaging the temperature of the specimen. Of course, the external temperature of the specimen. And we are doing some temperature measurements. We did only uh, this once for um, an s printed specimen without coating. So here you can see the temperature fluctuation in blue on the specimen, so the surface of the specimen, and the orange is the room temperature that we monitor through the dummy specimen. And this is because, I mean, the room temperature can change and we need to know the change in the room temperature. So this is done for one hertz frequency and then we went up to uh, 30 hertz. So you can see the shift in the uh, same way. The, the maximum and minimum temperature on the surface of the specimen. The result can be summarized, uh, so I'm sorry, but we still don't have the coded results. We wanted to do this uh, some weeks before uh, the conference, and I mean, you know probably better than me, but from an experimental point of view, things can go wrong quite easily, so we only have the s printed results, and as you can see, I mean, also logically probably, but um, Increasing the displacement amplitude during fatigue loading, then the temperature range on the surface is increasing, and it, it is increasing uh, more, let's say, if we increase the frequency. So this is, I mean, kind of logic result, but I wanted also to compare some coded results that I don't have, and I'm sorry for this. So with this thing, I concluded. <coughs> so I show you here uh, some preliminary results on. Uh, a coating, uh, say coating behavior on specimen tested statically and uh, on fatigue at two different frequencies uh, at the moment only on PLA with the FDM additive manufacturing and FCC lattice structure. So we saw an enhancement of the behavior both statically and on fatigue uh, while uh, the specimen was coated. And what we're doing now is also evaluating the coating thickness. This is quite important. We want to evaluate a kind of uh, also deviation of the coating thickness because it's a manual process and it's quite easy also to, to have different thicknesses for all the different struts. So this is what we're doing right now. And also for the future, try to use some uh, local parameters for assessing the, the um, fatigue results. So this is something also difficult to do with lucky structures because it's difficult to define local parameters. Or I mean, uh, let's say the geometry is quite different from the nominal one, so local parameters can be kind of tricky to, to define. So, with this I conclude, and, okay, I cannot see the last slide, but thank you very much, and please, uh, the comments uh, or suggestions are yeah. here for, for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we have the time for a few questions. Uh, there are any questions? One question. Do you the fancy up to front heads? The premium is very high, from my point of view. Because you measure the temperature outside, yes? Yeah. Not outside, not inside. Yes. No, um, I mean, yes. I, I, I did that years ago. Oops, sorry. But five years from the left, so we need to have this temperature high. Maybe this, this temperature for premium we have to take it down. It's a temperature increase to the the temperature is very pronounced, so they're careful with such high speed, high uh, With uh, lucky structures or with like polymer? Well, polymer structure. Mm. Yeah, for five hundred and that, not too high. <coughs> I think I wanted to be too high. 
Testing at different frequencies to see the temperature behavior and to understand if, I mean, uh, we all know that there is a heat generation inside polymers and there can be a thermal runway and then the polymer is completely gone. But it didn't happen. I mean, we had uh, tests lasting for, uh, I mean, two days sometimes at 3 Hz if you want to reach a lot of cycle. And at 20 Hz, sometimes we had a specimen lasting one day to, to reach some million cycle. So we never had really thermal runway. Never. And the temperature was always like probably one degree more than room mm -hmm. temperature. So we well, never really reached really well, high temperature. Also, it's too much around the inside. Yeah, inside, so yeah. yeah that, that's, that's true. But, I mean, it's, at the moment, it's already difficult to check carefully the temperature outside. But yeah, of course, yeah. inside would be a really good point to do it. Yeah. And then, more questions? <laughs> Maybe one second question. <coughs> can I just ask you, out of curiosity, how you came up with the um, design of the specimen was that so uh, yeah as I, I told you before there was the problem of uh, I mean because testing this on tensile loading yeah, yeah because there are no 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 standards for this right well, no 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 this is made up completely by by us and so this is a, I would say like uh, <laughs> point, point one so we this is the first iteration of the specimens so we only did some Preliminary numerical analysis to understand that, let's say, the radius here that you cannot really see uh, was not influencing the stress state uh, in the first part of the lattice structure. But other than this, then we had some problems because the clumsy system was destroying the polymer, so we added some, I mean, new field, and, and then we added up like doing a hole and putting like a metal plate inside. So this is the best thing we could have done. And, now we have these specimens, and the orders that you saw are from these. But as I told you before, as soon as you change probably the, the, the unit cell number, the result could change uh, completely. So we, we are not, I mean, I will not generalize these results at the moment. So our relative results for this specimen, uh, this specimen geology. Uh, just a final remark from my side. What kind of applications <coughs> are you looking for? Sorry? What application, what kind of applications are you looking for? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I'd say the, the idea was not coming from me, but from my colleague that is yeah. using coating a lot in different applications. And he always uh, tested the coating uh, from a static point of view. Okay. And he saw a lot of increase also in compressive force. And so the idea was, okay, let's see if we can also obtain some good results in fatigue. Yeah. Uh, and so this is yeah. why the, this work started. And that, let's say, it's to understand if there are some fatigue enhancement in Using this coating, it's quite easy to apply it. Of course, you should have the let's say the lattice structure open to be able to put the coating. But it's really like a, a, an hour of work, uh, staying there and curing the the, the the resin, and that's it. So, okay, Andrea, thanks again for your presentation.